here. Now, I got Mohammed and Arya as a warning about those gates. He says that the rise is unusual given the strong stock market, and we should take note of this. Mohammed, I never thought of you as a gold bug. I never thought of you as one of those people who sort of got all hot under the collar about gold. But when I read your article, you're suggesting that actually this is telling us something wider about what's happening in, 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 uh, in the economy, structurally. Yes, Richard, I'm not a gold bug. In fact, I don't own any gold, unfortunately, given the 30% plus gain. Um, what's happening is that the movement in the gold price has decoupled from its economic and financial influences. There is something else going on, and what's going on has a geopolitical angle to it that is overwhelming the economics and finance. Why should gold, though? Because the, the argument, the traditional argument is that in the last bastion of, of, of disaster and catastrophe, you've got gold that you can sell. So what is happening, and I understand geopolitical risk, but normally the dollar would benefit similarly at the same time. We're not seeing that. So what are people frightened of here? So first of all, who's buying the gold? Right. It's foreign central banks. Foreign central banks are trying to diversify their reserves away from the dollar. It is part of a border phenomenon where we are seeing little pipes being built around the dollar at the core of the system. Those little pipes are not just reserve diversification, the alternative payment system, the alternative regional arrangements, and the alternative institutions. So led by China and some other countries, you're seeing these little pipes being built. And then we have the peculiar example of Russia. Most people thought that with massive sanctions on Russia, and with Russia thrown out of the SWIFT dollar system, the economy would collapse. It hasn't. Russia has been continuing to trade and what Russia has done, it has built a system that includes four or five other countries that's clunky, that's inefficient, but that totally bypasses the dollars. They have all these things coming together, Richard. But then you take gold per se. How do you access that as an, as an asset class, other than putting it under the bed or having ingots or central banks who have to deposit it at, at depository institutions? Once you've got it, what are you going to do with it? So, so first, individual can access it. There are gold ETFs that allow you uh, to access it just like you access um, stock, other stocks and bonds. Um, what do you do with it? And that was the argument. Remember, um, you had Warren Buffett saying it's a complete wasted asset. Mm. If, but yet, its price keeps on going up. And that's why I'm saying what's going on here is something to pay attention to national security apparatus should be paying attention to it because it goes beyond just market Fast forces. It's serious. something that speaks to people trying to decouple from a dollar-based system. And that's because people have lost trust in the ability of the U.S. to be a responsible steward of the international system. If we look at, uh, I, since, since I have you, um, pardon the phrase, um, if we look at the IMF's WIO, uh, it's hardly the most exciting one this time round. I mean, let's, you know, I think we've both had more exciting moments. But it does, this idea that inflation, uh, job done, no, nothing to see here, move further along. Do you buy that? Nothing. I do buy that we're no longer going to see the very high inflation that peaked at nine over 9% for the global economy. Um, but I don't buy that the inflation uh, monsters completely conquered. If we retain 2% inflation targets, which we will for a while, then the so-called last mile is going to prove quite tricky, and is proving quite tricky for the U.S. in particular. This is mainly a U.S. problem. You don't believe that they're going to hit 2%, though, do you, anytime soon? I mean, you, you, you sort of are, are comfortable with this idea, yeah, 2.3, 2.4, what's a couple of bit between friends? Correct, because I don't is think we destabilize that? inflation expectations. I yeah. think that we can live with slightly higher inflation. In fact, I believe, and that's just a hypothesis, which is that if central banks could specify the inflation target today, they would specify two and a half to three, rather than two. Final question, Alan. You can plead the fifth on this. I'll, I'll let you do that. I'm gonna give you a million in value, million dollars in value. 
You can have it in crisp 100 bills, or you can have it in gold. Same value, as of today, it will be the same value. A million in gold or a million in crisp bills. Which will you take? Am I investing it? Why do you always have to ask the right question that makes my... <laughs> yes, if I'm sir, spending it, if I'm yes. spending it I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have gold. Gold is not a currency. Gold is a store of value. If I'm investing it, I would probably have gold up to about 5% of that million. And I'm happy for you to give me the million and we can experiment. <laughs> That's why we love having you on the program. Uh, the, as they say, that famous line, the check's in the mail. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.